Hey guys, Sandy P. again. Um, I just got done with my Target haul, so if you watched that one. Um, and I told you I was going to come back on and tell you what's going on with my life. Okay. If I cry, I'm sorry. It's been, you know, one of those days. And this news has me crying. It's happy tears. It's sad tears. It's a combination of everything. Okay. Um, those of you who are regular to my channel, I'm sorry know about my husband passing away in January and um, I live in Arizona right now we moved here from Washington DC and before that I lived in Maryland where I had been a live-in nanny and then I worked in the schools um, but I was born and raised in a small town in Nebraska so I've been trying to decide what I wanted to do I know I don't want to stay in Arizona um, I was deciding, do I want to move back to Nebraska, or do I want to move back to Maryland? I had originally, before all this, you know, COVID-19 stuff started, I was going to um, be flying to Maryland in April. I was going to look for jobs there. I was going to check out apartments. Um, I had someone who said I could stay with them until I found a place to live. But I wanted something in place before I made the decision. Oh. I signed um, a six-month lease on my apartment here, and so end of September, my lease is up. Okay. And originally, um, next week, I was supposed to be flying to Nebraska. Actually, June 9th, so a little bit more than a week. And I was going to be doing the same thing. I was going to be looking at apartments, looking for jobs, you know, trying to decide all that. Well, I wasn't for sure how everything was going to be working out. And um, when I go to those, I, I keep checking on Harper because he's getting into stuff because he's a beast. When I go places, I wanted to be able to visit my family and friends. And I knew with everything going on that that wasn't going to happen. Um, so I switched my um, Nebraska trip is now July, the end of July. And... I just rescheduled my Maryland trip for the end of August. Still moving the end of September. Um, I was born in a small town in Nebraska. Population is under 800 people. That is where um, Frank is also buried. It was his choice. We talked about it a couple years ago. Two years ago was his cancer diagnosis. I don't know if it was before. I think it was before the cancer diagnosis we had talked about it. And we talked about, you know, where did he want to be buried, you know, all this stuff. And he said he wanted to be buried in Nebraska. And I said, well, do you mean Creighton? Because that's where my dad was buried and where, you know, eventually my mom would be buried too. Because those of you who haven't heard my story, um, when we got married at our rehearsal dinner, Frank told everybody that he married me just to get to my mom. He loved my mom. So when she passed away a year ago, it really, it, it was hard on him. It was harder on him than his own mom passing away just a couple months before that. Okay, so um, Frank said, no, he didn't want to be buried in Creighton. He wanted to be buried in Beamer, which is my hometown. And I'm going, why Beamer? That's not where, you know, dad is. That's not where mom's going to be. And he said, yeah, but that's home I'm going okay Frank never lived in Nebraska he never lived in a small town his whole life he lived he was born and raised in the DC area and then we moved out to Phoenix okay so um, after my dad passed away my dad passed away nine years ago mom stayed in the family house for a year or so and then she got into those apartments in my hometown so she got into these apartments. Well, when I was talking to people about, you know, I, I wanted to look in Nebraska, I wanted to look in Maryland and stuff, they said, why don't you check out the apartments that your mom lived in? So I contacted them. They sent me an application. And, um, you know, I had to fill out the application and everything. A lot of the apartments, they're, they're income-based too. And you have to qualify to live there. Well, I got, I called them yesterday. I'm sorry, my eye itches. I called yesterday and um, 
talked to the person in charge and she said yeah we got your application and um, you've been accepted and you're at the top of the list went, okay and I told her I said you know I don't live there yet I'll, I'll be coming in um, you know September and she said that she thinks that in September they're gonna have an apartment available my cats are fighting over here so um, I found out yesterday that I will have a place to live in Nebraska if that apartment's not available in September if it's like October and I have to stay here an extra month or if I have to you know whatever I have to do I'll work it out just have to find a job there and I asked her I said um, can you give me like an estimate on rent just an idea because I know it's got to be cheaper than what I'm paying here so I wasn't too worried about it and she told me she goes well it's income based I said well you know I'm not working right now because um, I had been my husband's caregiver and then when he passed away um, I, I applied to another agency because other agencies were paying more and had better benefits than the agency we had gone through I'll just leave it at that and so once I went through there then this whole COVID-19 stuff started and they weren't placing new caregivers with new clients um, for safety reasons of the clients and everything and I know that some of my friends who have husbands or spouses who are stroke survivors said that they aren't able to get their respite care because they're not placing people right now because of everything going on which I think is crazy um, so that means some of these family members had to go to, like to assisted livings or to nursing centers where they aren't able to see their family members in anyway that's beside the point so she knows they know I'm not working and they said um, you know they'd work with it and, and I said but as I'm coming in July and I'm gonna be looking for a job and they said they would you know whatever wherever I'm working at it'll be income based still and I said you know I've got the money in my savings that I'm not worried about it okay I am selling my paparazzi jewelry so I guess that would count as my income so I do have that um, so I guess there is some income so that that's okay and they're perfectly fine with that so now um, I have to find a job in Nebraska if I get a job in town that I don't have to worry about this part quite yet if I get a job in the next town over which I may have to do I mean I'm gonna go when in July I'm gonna go and I'm gonna apply every place in town every little business you know even if I'm working part-time I'm, I'm okay with that you know going here or there two part-time jobs whatever I have to do I'll do it um, but it if I can stay in town then I'm okay for a while with this if I get a job out of town then I'm gonna have to get a car I hate cars I hate driving um, I have friends in my hometown that, okay, we have, there are like little grocery stores, not little, not grocery stores, but little like convenience smart things in my hometown that I could do you know, for groceries. Um, I have friends that I think would be willing to take me to the next town over to get groceries if I needed it. So I think I'll be okay there. Um, I'm... I have to start packing up this apartment I haven't really started yet it, it's I've got I've got months still but so much of this is Frank stuff so I have to go through all that um, a lot of the stuff like a lot of the furniture I'm not taking with me I'm just gonna start fresh there it's gonna be hard I don't want to cry Thirty-two years ago, I took a job as a live-in nanny. Before I took the job, I asked the family to call my mom and dad, just so my mom and dad knew I was making a good choice. When they realized that I wanted to move, mom and dad said that if I wanted to come home, they'd find a way that I could come home whenever I wanted.
they had some help. Frank called Nebraska home. He chose my hometown to be buried. He chose to be home in Nebraska when God called him home. So Frank was working with my mom and dad, and I'm going home. I never knew my life was going to take this turn. My life has taken turns these past 14 years that I never thought they'd take. But that's my news. I have an apartment if, you know, as soon as it's empty. <laughs> so I'll have that. I just need to get a job, maybe a car, and I just need to pack up my life. So I just want to share that with you. This is also going to start coming on to 12 minutes now. I'm sorry. Sorry for crying. Um, again, I want you guys all to stay safe. Stay sane. Our mental health is just as important as our physical health right now with everything going on. Our world is starting to open up again. But with opening them up, some people aren't. People have different beliefs. We still need to be careful and not go crazy. Because like here in Arizona, numbers have gone up a little bit. Uh, um, not, not a huge spike, just a little bit. But it's two weeks after Mother's Day. Let's see what happens two weeks after Memorial Day, how our numbers go. So y'all, stay safe, stay sane, and I want to end this at 12 minutes. Love you guys. Have a great life.